Welcome everyone Super. to how to make OKRs lean again by Ben, uh, no, Bart Denhock. Bart Denhock, he, he is an experienced expert in OKRs. Uh, as a coach and consultant, he has uh, more than 10 years of experience in applying OKRs uh, and also training professionals. Uh, he is the founder and uh, CEO of Moving the Needle. I think he is the author of Lean OKRs as we see in the presentation. So without any further delay, I'm just handing over to Baden Hart. Over to you. Thanks. <laughs> and um, welcome everybody to, um, to this presentation. And today I want to talk about how to make OKRs lean again. And um, yeah, like I said, um, I'm the founder of Moving the Needle. I'm also the author of this, um, this book, Moving the Needle with Lean OKRs, with a foreword by Christine Watke. Um, so um, I have some links uh, to the book uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, so today I'm going to talk about OKRs. So, you know, in a nutshell, what are OKRs? It's this, you know, 40 year old goal setting system. It's that old. Um, and if you implement it correctly, you get this. Um, innovation and it is next next level of growth and, and some people refer to them as uh, you know this is the tool to do to get 10x growth and it has boomed since 2019 ever, ever since john Doerr uh, wrote a book about uh, okrs uh, which is called measure what matters and it's used you know today by all the big tech firms out there uh, you see facebook amazon netflix google all of them use for, so, some sort of okrs um, and it's getting popularity, uh, especially in Silicon Valley, um, but it's now spreading to Europe, Asia, et cetera. And um, it's, a great, it's, a, it's a great tool. However, they're bloated. And, um, you know, people are getting tired a bit of them. And, um, and, and because, you know, the, the process is getting cumbersome, uh, people don't like them anymore. People are just tired of them. You know, is this the, the next management fad that's coming along, right? So people don't like them anymore. And um, I was in a webinar with uh, John Cutler, and he's a product evangelist and, uh, and coach at Amplitude. And um, he has a presentation about his North Star framework. Uh, maybe some of you know about that. And at the end of the presentation, people were asking about, you know, how, uh, John, how's, you know, can you tell a little bit about how OKRs work and OKRs this and OKRs that? And and then at some moment he said, well, people, <laughs> they're just goals, right? And I think, you know, in essence, that, that's what they really are. They're, they're just goals. And so the question um, is, why is it that organizations are failing to move the needle with OKRs today? And um, to explain that, um, the presentation is in three parts. So first, I want to tell you um, a story about the road to failing with OKRs. And then in part two, I'm going to uh, give you five things to pay attention to, to ensure the success of OKRs. And then part three, why it is time actually to, to make OKRs lean again. So this is the story. It's a story about Business Finder. And Business Finder is a non-existing company, but you know, it, it, it illustrates pretty much how most companies that I encounter work today. It is a uh, cloud native SaaS scale up company. And they're helping sales team to find new business matches faster. Um, the selling subscriptions um, to the app, uh, they have a freemium model and a paid model, and they have around you know 200k to 650k MMR over the last five years, which is pretty okay. And um, they have about 150 employees distributed over multiple countries. And um, well, the company wants to grow to what I call the, the next level, right? That's the CEO, they want to grow the company to the next level. However, the problem is that there's a low employee um, engagement. So uh, engagement is low, uh, employees are leaving the company and find it really hard to find new talent. And uh, the guy um, on, on this picture, his name is Pedro. And also Pedro is a non-existing <laughs> person in this case, but, um, um, uh, he has a, a role in, in Business Finder. He joined Business Finder uh, three months already. He's an HR manager. And he has about 10 years of experience in HR. And he's joining the company. And the CEO asks him, hey, Pedro, can you help us uh, solve this problem for us? 
And um, so th this is the journey. It's the journey, to, to, <laughs> the road to failing with OKRs. Uh, so the problem was employee engagement. So Peter was thinking about, you know, how, how bad can it be? How bad can, can our employee engagement be? So he has some experience, you know, he's already 10 years in, in, the, in the profession. So he knows, you know, I'm going to, to run a survey. I'm going to run a survey in the company um, um, with the question, you know, do you like uh, working here or how, how much do you recommend this working place to somebody else, right? Maybe to some, 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 to some of your friends. And this, this is, you know, pretty famous in, in, in the field of HR. It's called EMPS, Employee Net Promoter Score. It's, it's the score and how, how much you are willing to promote the, uh, your workspace to somebody else. So I did the survey and results were, you know, pretty much negative, <laughs> which he was expecting, right? Four out of 10. And then um, he's entering his research phase. So he thought about, you know, what can we do? What can we do about, you know, increasing this employee engagement? And he was reading a lot of articles. Um, um, he asked peers, he asked his friends, you know, what can I do to increase that, 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 that low employee engagement? And then, you know, it was Sunday morning. He was, you know, eating his breakfast and he was reading in his favorite HR magazine about this tool called OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. And, um, and, and, and I was reading it and he found it really interesting. And then all of a sudden he said, oh, this is great. You know, if, if you implement this tool, you get um, better alignment. You can turbocharge your business with that. Um, um, and and all, all these popular, popular magazines talk about OKRs. Oh, Google is using it. So this should be great, right? This must be great. So he was reading about it. He was reading a little bit more books about it. I think this is the thing that I want to implement. This is the thing that is going to help us with increasing employee engagement. And, you know, based on the experience, he knows, okay, if, he, if he's going to do this, we also need to have a tool. And that tool also needs to be integrated with all the existing tools that we already have, right? That needs to be integrated with Slack. It needs to be integrated with Trello, Mumble, whatever uh, tooling that you have out there. Uh, so it needs to be integrated uh, because he knows, you know, if you're going to implement this tool, uh, people um, uh, uh, need to, it needs to be integrated with all these other things. So he was, you know, what everybody should do, right? <laughs> he was typing in OKR software in Google and he got about 1.7 million results back on OKR software. So I thought, okay, you know, let's... Um, Let's first diverge and, 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 and make a list of all the tools that, that, that we see. So he was reading you know, the internet, uh, selected a lot of tools and uh, uh, more tools. And you know, finally, he selected one of his tools. Great. He thought this, this is a perfect match. It integrates with all the other tools. And by the way, the, the nice folks about um, the OKR software company, they also offered certification. And um, and he thought, oh, this is amazing. They also can also offer certification, so we get some training in. And um, oh, um, I know, and I know uh, our intern, uh, our intern, she has some spare time, so can, she can maybe join um, the certification. Um, there's also uh, the head of engineering um, or the engineering manager. He also has some training budget left over, so he can also do the certification. And then, of course, um, we have an agile coach, and uh, you know. Uh, all of you agile coaches are the, the company-wide meeting facilitators, right? So also the agile coach can, can go to the certification. So after a couple of months, everybody got certified. Well, actually it took them one day to get certification. So everybody got certification, um, the intern, the engineering manager and the agile coach, they all got certification, great. Um, so let us check uh, how Pedro is doing. And um, this is uh, the PHI index. And PHI index stands for the Pedro Happiness Index. And the Pedro Happiness Index is now 10 out of 10 because he's really happy. You know, he found a solution to his uh, potential problem to improve employee engagement. Um, but let's check in for a moment, right? Um, just a short mini moment of the truth. Um, at this moment, uh, Pedro spent a lot of time uh, and does money 
on researching the topic, on um, buying a lot of tools and getting certification uh, from, uh, from Defender. And at this moment, the needle hasn't moved a bit so far. So, but you know, maybe that's going to come in a later stage. So the next thing Pedro learned is that we want to convert all the things that we, that we do, we want to convert them to OKRs. So how does it work? Well, uh, all the existing KPIs in the company, they're going to convert it to OKRs. Uh, we have goals in the company, like personal development goals. We have um, um, sprint goals. We have project goals. They're all, go all going to be converted into OKRs. Um, and then we also have some desires from people and you know, especially higher managers that say, like, oh, well, great is OKRs. Let's uh, also uh, uh, convert some of our ideas to OKRs as well. And then of course the big cascade happens. So it always starts with you know, the company annual OKR. Then it gets decomposed into all the different departments. So we have the marketing department, we have the engineering uh, department, we have um, the product uh, department, we have the QA department, uh, we have the sales department, etc., finance department, and they all have their OKRs, right? And then it's going to cascade down in the organization. Um, then each team uh, in each of these departments also need to have OKRs, right? So at the team A, team B, team C, they also need OKRs, and everything needs to be connected back to to the department level OKRs. And um, well, b b before you know it. You get this 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 idea, right? So the the CEO has four uh, objectives and a couple of key results. Then all the VP engineers or the the VPs, sorry, um, uh, the CFOs, CRO, all of them have OKRs. Then their teams have OKRs, and at uh, each individual they have OKRs. How's Pedro do so far? Well, seven out of ten, he's not really amused um, because he thought, oh. This, I, th I thought this was be was easier, right? When I was reading all the books, this should be easy. But you know, it turns out it's not that easy. It took a lot of time to, to make sure that everybody has their OKRs. Um, but he also thinks, uh, now everybody individually needs OKRs, right? Because that, that's what he's learned uh, online and in, in the books um, to also add personal OKRs. And so inside each of these teams, um, all the individuals, all the individual members of these teams, so the software engineers, the UX engineers, um, uh, the marketing people inside these teams, salespeople inside, it, they all need to have their individual OKRs. And well, not a lot of people liked um, filling in these kind of things, right? Filling in their OKRs. So they did a trick, you know, let's send out an email to everybody in the company. So please fill in your individual OKRs before next Friday. Um, 5 p.m. end of day, right? Um, and well, they got some response and everybody was filling in their OKRs. And um, well, before they knew it, they get this uh, crazy amount of OKRs in the company, right? And those who are familiar with Lean knows that, you know, uh, keeping a large inventory is a form of waste. Well, I'm going to talk about it in a moment, but they're, they're, they have this, Tremendous amount of OKRs, but luckily they have this OKR software tool to manage all these OKRs, right? Um, so, um, so everybody has the OKRs. Now it's actually time to start managing with these OKRs, right? And what happens a lot is that um, people are setting their OKRs at the beginning of the quarter or beginning of the year, and then they forget about them, right? They set their OKRs at the beginning, and then Maybe at the end of the end of the quarter, at the end of the ninety days, which is a typical OKR cycle, they 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 review the OKRs and they thought like, oh, nothing has been moved, right? And and the, because of you know the whirlwind, it's about our day job, and our day job is going to prevent us from achieving making any significant impact on our OKRs, right? Because we need to put out fires. Um, um, customers are coming to us with new requests. Uh, other teams are, you know, disturbing us. Um, on Slack, people are interrupting us. We don't have time to work on these OPRs, right? So, and 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 Pedro was, uh, well, a bit afraid. Like, how is this going to work out, right? So, on a scale um, five out of ten uh, at this moment, Pedro is, is not is not a happy camper. He thought that was be easier, and then you get this conflicting priorities. 
So every individual team created their OKRs, all the individuals created their own OKRs. And um, one team wanted to have help from another team. And I said, well, we can't help you <laughs> because we have our OKRs. We, and that's the most important thing we're going to work on. So no, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we can't help you, right? We have our SLA contracts between each other, but you know, we, we can't help you, right? And this concept, um, I, I like this. This is from Elon Musk and he, he called this effector thinking. Right, so every every individual, every team in a company is is like a little factor, and well, it's an illusion that you get all these factors into into a north position, right? So, um, but at least you should try. And you know, if all the teams have individual OKRs, they're all pointing to different directions, right? And that's of course not the idea behind OKRs that you know everybody's pointing to different different locations. So, um, and and and, and Pedro. Is, is 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 a little bit afraid at this moment. He, he thinks like, oh, I'm not sure how, is, how this is going to work out. Um, so three out of 10 for Pedro, um, because he thought, you know, OKR should help with alignment and with focus, uh, but the opposite is true. So three months later, right? Everybody had OKRs that were working on it, at least <laughs> if they were not interrupted. And um, well, actually there was a little progress. So metrics did not move. There was poor check-ins happening. Um, there was little feedback happening coming from, from, from customers or others. Um, there was no top-down alignment. Uh, there was no horizontal coordination happening. Um, there was no learning from mistakes. And there was zero experimentation happening. Right. And at this moment, Pedro said, OK, I'm not sure what to do anymore. Two out of ten, but then, of course, after a couple of months, then the big moment of truth, the real moment of truth, is that well, the annual performance review. Let's look at the EAMPS scores and, and look at all the other things. Um, and then the CEO um, of Business Finder came to Pedro and said, like, you know, after all this investment, OKRs have to be proven a bad methodology. It was not helping us. Um, and police are still, you know, leaving the company. EMPS score is still low. Um, yesterday, I had a meeting with one of our investors, and they talked about fee to mum, right? It's the big thing from from Salesforce. Um, maybe let, let's let's try that instead, right? I think it's a better fit for us, or you know, fee to mum, or OGSM, or whatever framework you want to put in in place as a replacement of OKRs. But of course, you know, none of them is, are going to work. So how is Pedro doing so far? Well, he thinks <laughs> he's really angry. Um, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should leave the company. Uh, and he has no idea. So, so what's the fable in the story? The fable in the story is that, well, um, the company didn't have any strategy, right? There was no strategy. Uh, people are just implementing OKRs for the sake of implementing OKRs. Uh, without you know thinking about why are we using it, and so they go only to execution mode. So we just run OKRs, and we we were very dogmatic about it, and just implement them, implement them, and see if if it gives us any benefit. Um, and of course, this is a, a, a famous sto a story of of failure, and I see many many companies out there. Um, having a similar story. I, I'm exaggerating a little bit here, uh, but most of the ingredients in the story, uh, unfortunately, are true for many companies. So what are the five pitfalls you want to avoid um, and you want to overcome when you're going to implement OKRs? If, you've, if you read about OKRs and think like, hmm, this sounds an interesting tool for our company, um, here are some things that you need to pay attention to when you're going to implement them. So first is the right trigger. Uh, you know, in the in the in the in the story that I just explained, the, the, there was a wrong trigger. EMPS, for example, and the employee engagements is is the wrong trigger to start using OKRs. I would say, right? So, um, and and most of the OKR initiatives are coming from HR. And well, uh, frankly speaking, um, I don't think that's a good idea. And, and why is that? Well, um, OKRs are about strategy execution. And HR is not responsible for strategy, right? It's the executive team of the company that is responsible for the strategy of the company. So they should own this. 
um, let's start with them. And so EAPS or, well, we want to have, a, uh, you know, we want to use OKRs because we want better alignment. Well, you don't get better alignment from OKRs. Just, you know, <laughs> you saw in the story, the, OK, <laughs> the alignment only got worse, right? So focus is another argument. But if you're going to transform all your existing goals into OKRs, then, well, you don't get any focus. And also engagement is, is you know, not should not be an argument um, to start using OKR or uh, we just want to grow. Well, no, you need to have a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, you cannot use OKRs. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> if you don't have a strategy, OKRs are useless, right? So you need to have a strategy, company strategy, um, uh, product strategy, um, any strategy would work, would work. <laughs> and, 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 and then it could help you get this 10 X growth if you, if you want, right. I'm not saying that every company should chase 10 X, but, um, so how can you do that? Well, first of all, and I, I, I hear a lot of companies complaining about OKR setting and finding the, the right key results and finding the right metrics. It's so hard. So, and yeah, of course, because you're not used to work in an environment where you, you're collecting a lot of data or when you, where, where you, people are used to work with metrics. So one of the things I always suggesting before you even start working with OKRs is first develop your strategy, but also create something like a value creation model where you're going to um, model out how everything is related to each other in terms of outcomes of the company. And so in this picture, uh, you see that um, uh, uh, customer lifetime value has a link to a monthly recurring revenue or churn rate has an impact. Or in this case of Business Finder, matching speed. How fast can people match? Uh, how fast are sales team going to find a match, right? And that will uh, result in custom improving customer satisfaction, which will improve NPS, which can maybe improve uh, on LTV, something like that. And then, as a, as a company, as, as the executive team, you can say, okay, no, based on our competitive analysis, we know that focusing on matching speed is the most important thing for our company. And that's why we're going to spend some focus on for the next 90 days or maybe the next year or something like that. And then OKRs can actually work. But without this model, without making such a model, it's very hard to find metrics and to find causality between those metrics. And no wonder that teams find it hard to set, set good, uh, good metrics for them. But the other step is, is preparation. Well, when you're going to impl implement OKRs, I just uh, mentioned a little bit, you need to have, um, if you don't have baseline data, it's very hard to set OKRs. So you need to have some kind of metrics. You need to have um, uh, your systems uh, already instrumented with, with, uh, with metrics um, and don't, Try to go for the perfect OKRs. Um, it's a learning experience. So OKRs is all about learning, learning um, to get feedback from your customers, learning and how they use your systems. Um, and then you can set goals uh, if you figure that out. So um, also you need to have um, a very high demo, uh, very high skill level inside your teams. Uh, doing OKRs or working data-driven or making data-informed decisions is, is very tough. And if your team is still struggling to implement Scrum, for example, um, and, and don't master continuous delivery, then how can you do five uh, or maybe 10 experiments per week in production if you, can't have, if you don't have this continuous delivery capability, for example, right? Uh, or if, you, if your teams are not being involved in, 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 in exploration of the problem, um, if that if that is outsourced to, for example, a product manager or a product owner, which is you know, uh, no, I'm going to do the hard work. <laughs> I'm going to uh, figure out and do all the customer interviews and customer talking, and then I'll come up with requirements, and then I'll give it to you, team, and you can start developing it and uh, uh, and basically creating a feature factory, right, where all the hard work is being done by a product owner. Uh, or product manager, and then basically handing out requirements so the engineer only need to type in, right? It's a, it's a classic model of failure. Um, so what you want to have instead is, what, of course, you want to have the strategy. You need to understand why you want to do OKRs. Uh, why is it important? Why is it important right now? Um, collect data, 
make sure that you have effective team collaboration, um, that, that you get the whole team included into um, uh, exploration about the problem, exploration about the solution. And of course, you should have some extent uh, on technical excellence. If you're, doing, if you're going to use OKRs for product development in a technical area, you need to have technical excellence because you need to master continuous deployment. Uh, otherwise, it will be very hard for you to do uh, to run any experiments, I would say. And I put it in number three, but actually it's number one. Um, um, culture, I think it's really important um, to build in trust and to empower your teams with OKRs. So if there's no trust in your organization, if, if, if managers don't trust their teams to run experiments or to learn new things, um, OKRs won't work, right? Because OKRs are always about new things. They want there's always OKRs are always about changing, about change. And in in any, you know, in any change management, you need to make sure that people are feeling safe to run experiments, to try out new things, to make sure that they um they they change or they they figure out a way in how to change the behavior of customers. And so you need to have account. So if there's no accountability, it doesn't work. If you don't check in on a regular basis with your OKRs, you know, uh, there's no, uh, that doesn't work. Um, if there's no learning, if you don't get any feedback, like I said before, like if you if you can't run weekly experiments or if you if, if there's no mechanism um, to get customer feedback or to get feedback from, from your systems, um, it's very hard to, to understand if you're going into the right direction. So instead, now you need to have buy-in from the top when you uh, when you're doing OKRs, right? If you're working in a large organization, maybe not the whole executive team should be included. Um, uh, so maybe only the, the 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 VP of product or something like that. Um, but at least the executive team should know about them and should support that effort. Um, there should be a high level of trust and safety inside these teams, and um, coaching should be here. And I'm not talking about agile coaching in, in, in particular. Um, also, managers need to start coaching their teams. So it's not enough to work together with a team and define an OPR for, for a particular team. Um, the team has maybe some difficulty uh, on moving the needle. And so, yes, they maybe need uh, agile coaching or team coaching, but they also need to be coached techn technically they also need to be coached in, in business, right? So moving to OKRs also means moving away from the traditional management styles of delegating work. And um, that's a big mindset shift. So, um, and last but not least, I think people should have a growth mindset, right? If, you, if you're going to start, start setting challenging goals, you need to be able to understand that you can change um, and that, you, that, that the whole team, team is going to change to work on a very ambitious result. So these are things that, that needs, to implement, needs to be implemented. And that's why do, uh, working with OKRs is so hard, right? It, it requires a big shift in the whole organization, not only for teams, but including management and including executives. So, Point number four is simplicity. In, in the example, um, in the story that I, I told before, you saw that there is this crazy amount of OKRs, right? And but if you have a strategy, you can make you can make start you can make decisions, um, and you can focus. And if you have a company and you have five top level OKRs, and then each department also have five OKRs, and then each team will have three OKRs and each individual needs three OKRs. Yeah, they ending up with a lot of OKRs in the organization. And no wonder that you need to have an OKR tool to start managing all these tools, right? So if you're if, if you in a company, you should only have like one OKR and maybe three key results, three or four key results maximum at company level. And then depending on how large the organization is, each team need maybe a couple, need, need one OKR as well. But ideally, teams share an OKR with each other, right? 
this is how you get collaboration between them. So let's say you have an organization of 150 people like, like Business Finder in this case, they probably need maybe four or five OKRs in a whole company maximum. And that all fits on one sheet of paper. So just to give you an, uh, give you an idea about how simple your OKR should be. And then I, I love the statements from, from James Clear from Atomic Habits. And he said, well, you should forget about goals, right? So focus on systems instead. And, and, and what he meant with that is that, well, if you don't have a system, um, setting you can set goals, whatever you want, but yeah, it doesn't work. So maybe if some uh, new, year, new year's resolutions or you say, oh, well, next year, um, I want to be, I want to, uh, well, I want to do exercise more. I want to eat healthier or something like that. And well, maybe the first month you're going to do that. Um, but the month after and the next month after, you know, interest will drop and well, you forget about that, right? You're not going to change your behavior. So you need to have a system in place so that you keep reminded about that goal and um, that you're going to continue doing that. And all, all of this is captured in, in, in the method that I'm described in my book. And so you don't need to, you don't need dedicated OKR software, right? You don't need to like a big pro uh, big bloated process uh, to set OKRs. Um, there shouldn't be um, any more meetings with OKRs. Um, there should be shouldn't be any micromanagement happening in you know setting OKRs instead of setting and forgetting about it. Um, and you should change your mindset uh, when you're thinking about OKRs and working with OKRs. So that that that's what I try to capture in what I call lean OKRs, right? so to make everything small and lean again. Um, hopefully, people are starting to love OKRs again. So how can, are you going to make your OKRs lean? No, I already give some ideas. Um, so what I see is that there are three things that you need to get um, that you need to get in, in shape in, in a company. First is the foundation. And you need to have the basics implemented. So that means that you need to have a strategy, a mission, vision, and a strategy. You need to understand how metrics work and what's the difference between a measure and a metric and an indicator or a KPI, because there are differences between them. How you can set a single OPR for your company or for your team. Um, how you how you write good OKRs. Yeah, so a lot of people struggle with that. And and how do you work and how do you create empowered teams? And last but not least, um, understand that doing OKRs, working with OKRs, you're in the field of behavior change, right? You're so you're changing either your employees' behavior or you're going to change the behavior of your customers. But behavior change is really hard, right? So understand these foundational elements of OKRs. And then, of course, you need to have a system in place to make sure that you get uh, to make sure that you're going to achieve your goals. And then last, you need to build up the skills and competencies and uh, uh, I think also the mindset to start working with them. So I'm going to, I don't have time to, to highlight all of them, um, but I'm going to focus on three of them. So which is the single OKR, the weekly check-ins, um, and, and what I think is important is scientific thinking. So you need to have a lightweight system a lightweight governance process to implement uh, your OKRs and make sure uh, that you have a system in place um, to, to, to make sure that you harness uh, and harden your OKR. And this is a very lightweight process. So, you know, don't think about the big blow the process. It always starts with a strategy. So you need to have a strategy and that will inform what kind of OKR you can set for the company. So that's the first step. So you set, need to set an OKR, and that's you know, at company level, the executive team sets an OKR, um, and at, at, at levels below, it's a collaboration between managers and their teams. Then you're going to align the OKR. You're going to align with you know other people in the team. Um, you're going to align with other people in the organizations, and so there's a, there's some kind of back and forth. So there's only like one arrow, but there should also be an arrow back, and so uh, it's a back and forth between setting and aligning. 
with each other. Then you're going to do kickoff, like this is the OKR. We're going to make everything transparent in the organization. This is the OKR that we're going to focus on for the next 90 days. And then you're going to start executing it. And executing um, means that you're going to um, do two things. One is Monday morning, you're going to do a check-in. Just check on the OKR, like how we're doing OKR-wise with our team or with our company. Um, um, and then at the end of the week, also celebrate like things that you've learned, um, things that that didn't work out, or you know, uh, be happy about that you make it, that you have made some progress. And then at the end of the cycle, you're going to do a review, a retrospective. Um, you can also do that uh, mid quarter or uh, after 45 days. Just you know, understand how are we doing with OKRs, how we're doing with um, the process, how we're doing with the metrics, do we need help? What can we learn from that? And take those learnings back into the next cycle and then the whole thing repeats. But setting the OKR um, for Business Finder, for example, could be something like that, right? So I talked about that uh, the strategy was, oh, we want to focus on making the business match, uh, find new quality or new uh, yeah, quality business matches faster. And why do we want that? Well, uh, because we want to have satisfied customers that talk about that talk about us positively, right? If we solve their problem, they're going to talk about us. And if they, if they talk about us, maybe also they stay longer with us. So retention um, is higher, right? And then we have some key results to start measuring that. And so we want to increase the number of profiles that, that exchange messages with a new contact within 24 hours or less. And we also want to increase the average accuracy of business measures from 42 to 85. And because if the accuracy of business matches, if, if we make perfect matches for these people, they will come back to us, right? So we know that the accuracy and, and, and the matching uh, is, is really important to us. So this is just an example. And this is, this is where the whole company is going to focus on for the next 90 days. And notice that there's no solutions in there. There are no tasks, only the outcomes here that needs to, that needs to change. So this is, fo this is how you can focus on a single OKR for the whole company, all right? And then if every, everybody's focusing on that, that is amazing. Um, and then the, the, the other part is the, the weekly check-ins. I think this is one of the most important things in OKRs, right? You need to make sure that the OKR stays top of mind and that you're actually going to track uh, some progress against the OKR that you have. So. Every check-in can be integrated with existing meetings. So if you're, for example, doing already a, a daily stand-up, it can be perfectly integrated into the daily stand-up of Monday, for example, right? A check-in, you know, just takes about 15 minutes, no longer, right? So in every check-in, you're going to focus on these four elements. You're going to focus on the OPR. You're going to focus on your health of the team or health of the company. You're going to look at some obstacles and you're going to find some experiments. So how does it look for Business Finder? Well, one of the one of the objectives is, well, one of the team objectives in this case would be, oh, we want to boost the business completion, uh, uh, business completion rate of SMB profiles. And we have a couple of key results and we're going to give a confidence score to that. So how confident as a team do we feel that the, at the end of the 90 days, we're going to make this, that we're going to nail this. Um, well, there are some concerns. So there's one happy face, a happy smiling face, and one not so happy smiling face. Um, and let, let's look at the, the health of the team. So uh, while we're working on the OKR, we also need to pay attention to maybe SLA contracts or other things. Like in this case, it's a very technical team. Um, they want to uh, measure the throughput of our critical APIs. And that needs to be okay, right? If, 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 if the throughput of these APIs are below certain thresholds, the team needs to take action, right? And that's more important than the OPR. Are they still learning every week or uh, are the customers still happy? Yeah, everything is green. Okay, so great, we can continue. And then, well, this onboarding completion rate, that was actually not that great. So can we maybe start defining some obstacles 
what are things that are in our way to getting a little bit closer to that? Um, if you frame them as questions, that is always great uh, because that will trigger some, some ideas and solutions in people. So if you define these obstacles, then we can maybe start running um, some or start defining some experiments. Now you can also include that in your, um, in your sprint planning, for example. So if you're doing the OKR check-in before you do a sprint planning, that's great because then you can take the input of what you've learned from the OKR to your sprint planning, something like that. Um, uh, but most most teams that work with OKRs, they don't use Scrum. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you can think about that as well. But you can think about some experiments that you want to try out. You're going to try them and you're going to review to check if they're making any impact on, on in this case, uh, onboarding completion rates. Now, what, can, what kind of things can we do? Can we run an experiment online? Can we deploy a, a small piece of software to a limited group? Um, and, and can we learn from that? So this is this is the OKR check-in, which is really important. And if you think about it, it's all ingrained in what, what's called scientific thinking. And, and those with you uh, that having a lean background, you probably recognize this from Toyota Kata. And OKRs are, are similar, right? So you can define the challenge, which is your OKR. This is 90 days from now, it's in the future. It's the thing that we want to change. Then we need to grab the current condition. So what is, what is our baseline data? How, if you make a picture today about our company, about our team, what's true about that, right? So that's the current condition. Uh, you can maybe back it up with some, some data. And then we know that the challenge is, is, is quite ambitious. So can we maybe break it down into smaller pieces that we can influence directly? And can we maybe list some obstacles? And so if you define the obstacles, just like you saw in the, in the OKR check-in, we have some defined some obstacles, and then we can start running some experiments. And so some technical teams are maybe familiar with running spike stories, uh, just to uh, try things out, run an experiment, talk to a customer, get some feedback, uh, doing an interview, uh, making a prototype, just to see and check out what works and what doesn't work. And then we can maybe proceed and then, oh, oh this, this works. Now, now we can, now we have... Uh, uh, taking a step in the right direction and the process continues. But the scientific thinking, this mindset is often lacking in, in, in many, many, many teams that I see out there, right? They're just, no, just give me the requirements. I will start working, right? And I don't think about, well, what's what's the impact of this the, of this story or what's the impact of this feature if you're going to release it to customers? And many teams that just ship the feature and I forget about it, but yeah, did the feature actually made impact? Is the feature that you've developed to production, if, is that still, is that, is that being used by people, right? Are our customers benefiting from it? So this, this, this can be applied to software development, but this also, of course, can be applied to, you know, changing your organization. So um, enough of that. So if you want to uh, learn more uh, uh, about Lean OKRs and how you can move the needle, then check out the book. Uh, it's on my website. Um, there's a um, um, if you if you want to buy them in bulk, then just send me a message. Um, I'm happy to provide uh, you uh, with a bulk, maybe for everybody in the company. Or if you, if you if you are really serious about OPRs, say, oh Bart, um, I really want to um, take this to the next level. Then um, let me know. I'm happy to talk about it. So um, that's it. Uh, Tenham, that is just one question. Maybe you could ask for that. Yeah. I've, oh, I see. Yeah, one question. One question. Um, maybe very quickly. Um, I've seen OKRs mostly uh, set top-down in cascading manner. However, sixty percent of the objectives should be bottom-up, as per uh, John Doerr. How do we get better alignment with OKRs? Yeah. So it's a combination of indeed top-down. So uh, leadership, uh, executive team should set. The, uh, the higher level o, uh, uh, OKRs because it's related to the strategy. But I think it's a myth that that the teams should then come up with the OKR, right? Because teams, they don't have the overview of, of how everything is going to be connected. So I think it's, um, there should be strong co collaboration between um, management and the teams. So I think teams can, sorry, management can set objectives. Like this is the direction team I want you to go. But the teams define the key results. 
So the team shouldn't, in my opinion, create the, the whole o, uh, OKR. They shouldn't create the objectives and the key results. They should only do the key results and, to, and, and have a conversation with the manager. Like it's a, a collaboration between managers and the team to define good, good key results. But managers are, in, frankly speaking, they, they should own the objectives. They, they are responsible for that. So yeah, I think that's a lot of confusion coming from that. If you, have, if you have a really mature team in Google, right? There are really mature product teams. Maybe they can set their own uh, objectives and key results. But in most organizations, it's a top-down and bottom-up approach where managers set the objectives, team set the key results. So I hope that answers the question. Even I have some questions, so I'll join the Hangout table. Yeah. All right. Uh, have Super. Some of questions on the uh, no measurements and then uh, how we can link. I think of uh, and how we can correlate with the user story, so etc. So um, let's join the hangout table. Thanks. Uh, thank. Thank you again, Bart. So. Mm -hmm.